Anya, welcome. Hi. Thank you. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Okay, so just, just to get you nice and warmed up, what is your favorite animal? Panda. Ooh, why panda? Because my nickname was Anya Panda for the longest. And pandas are cute and cuddly. Nice. Uh, favorite color? Black and white. <laughs> you're, very, you're very floral today. I know. <laughs> okay, what's the last book you read? The last book that I read was actually, it's a little out there. It's called Psychic Protection. Oh, why'd you choose that book? I just found it. Like, I normally, I feel as though, oh, it's a book, I'll read it. It's interesting. Cool. If you had to pick your favorite time of year, what would it be? Autumn. Mm. Yeah. Autumn. Not too cold, not too warm. Colors changing. That's true. Change of seasons. What did you have for breakfast this morning? This morning I had a yummy papaya with some strawberries. We need, we need to get better fruit in the house quick. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a little tip. We, need to, we have not had papaya for such a long time. Um, what's the last movie you watched? Um, the last movie that I watched was A Wrinkle in Time. I haven't seen it. Loved seen it. it. Yeah, I loved it. It was so good. Even though it was for kids, it was really, really good. So I know it obviously was a landmark film with Ava DuVernay mm -hmm. as the director, Oprah producing and starring in it. So I like that. If you could collaborate with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Mm, actually, my dream collaboration would actually be with Anya Hindmarch to work on a bag, um, either for charity or to raise awareness. That would be my dream collaboration. Nice. If you had to pick one album or artist to listen to for the rest of your life, who or what would it be? Hmm. Well, I'm going to be biased. And so I'm a huge Nirvana fan. Ooh, so, classic. yeah, I'm going to go with the classic Nirvana. So that would have to be the Nevermind. Album. Yeah. Or In Utero. Yeah. Perfect. Who is Anya? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, Anya is, I would say, the person that she fought to be. Um, Anya is the last of eight children. Actually, my middle name, Malik, is actually supposed to be my first name, but they kind of got that wrong. Oh, so, wow. yeah, things happen for a reason. <laughs> um, Anya is someone who um, is right about now feeling she knows her place in the world and comfortable with it. Yeah. I like that. Um, yeah. So I know you grew up in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. You also spent some time in America and in London. What did you gain from growing up in those three different places? Oh, a lot. So growing up in the Bahamas and the Caribbean, it's very small. Um, I learned a lot about, you know, community. Um, like recently when I was home, my uncle was like, you need to learn how to grow your own food. So he just literally was like, come, we're going to like have you go in and like toil the land. I'm just like, no, we can buy this from the food store. <laughs> so growing up on an island has taught me to be grounded, stay humble, as well as like, you know, um, family. Mm -hmm. Growing up in a city has taught me to be assertive. So living like in London, the U.S., I had to literally be assertive everywhere, going on the tube, um, standing <laughs> in the queue. <laughs> so. Are there any particular memories from your, your childhood or from growing up that really stand out for you? I think I just remember always being in the house with my family and just always like inside like just working on something so I remember my sister would buy me these kits she'd buy me um like these crystal kits and stuff and we were always like making or doing something so it was a house full of children mm -hmm. and I could also just remember days just going to the beach so that was always a beautiful day for me that beautiful like memories heaven. of course you are the founder of Willik bespoke hand handbag brand just say so tell me the story behind Malik. Okay. So 
um, before I started with League, when I was in university, so I came to London for uni, um, I had under 50 fashion bags. So when I finished uni, I went through this, I wouldn't even say midlife thing, like, what am I going to do next? And one of my friends was like, well, you kind of sell bags. Why don't you just make bags? And one day I was like, Eureka, I'll make bags. So before I actually used to make some for family and friends, but not to say actually put it out there. And that September 2015, that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I'm like, what am I going to call it? What is it going to be called? And then my dad at the time was like, why don't you just name it Waleek? And I'm like, no, I really, because I used to literally dislike my middle name. Yeah. And then um, I, I had a mentor at the time, Tracy. She was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And why don't you just use Waleek? So I was like, okay, this is coming a second time. I'll do it. And I just remember it kept every time like I went to do something for Waleek, like pitch or anything. It was like, yes, we love it. Keep going. And the the last thing I remember was having a lunch at um, London Library. So it's a private members club. Oh, wow. And that was actually supposed to be my testing of the water, but it turned out to be a launch and it just took a life of its own so that's how we got started that is amazing and you mentioned your mentor I mean, how important was she in your development and even like getting the confidence to actually start the brand it was she was she was literally at that time it's i would say as a creative you need a backbone at that time she was the one to say go for it push because having to move from actually having certainty into actually showing people what you make that was so scary and Tracy at the time was literally like my backbone so I really loved working with her oh that is amazing so of course you said you were selling bags before tell us the moment when you first fell in love with fashion and creating stuff mm, I would say that had to be around the era of do you remember, I think there was that phase in early 2000s where everyone had like track suits? Yes. Okay, that was that <laughs> phase. <laughs> and I remember I went away and I got my track suit and everyone was like, oh, I love it. Oh, it looks really, really dope. And I'm like, okay, yes, I'm going to stick with this. And that was the phase where I was like, okay, I love, I guess I love to express myself through clothing and fashion. What was that feeling when you first held your first ever Willeek designed handbag? I literally jumped up and down. Like when it was done, I remember stitching it and I had to actually, so this was in uni, I stitched it that night. Um, I was procrastinating actually doing it because I'm like, what is everyone gonna think? What are they gonna think? And I had a presentation the next day and I pitched it and I did really well in the pitch and everyone loved it. And I can remember just jumping in my room when I went home. I was like, oh my God, they loved it, they loved it. Yeah, and that was actually the first, um, that was actually the the Willeek tote. So it's a big oversized one. And I just was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did this, so. And you mentioned that of course it was um, handmade and all your designs are um, bespoke and handmade. How do you keep up with demand without um, compromising quality? That is a good question. So now I have help. So to keep up with demand, I do like a lot of quality testing, a lot of stretching. So when things are made, I just go through it with a fine tooth comb. You're like, okay, this doesn't look right. Or this, this needs to be adjusted because at the end of the day, I believe like this should be an heirloom. This should be carried on, like or passed along to another generation. And you know, essentially, I feel quality is the best thing that you can offer someone. That's very good. That's nice, actually. I like that you said that um, it should pass on from one generation to the next, because um, you are a firm believer in what's described as slow fashion. So could you explain to those who don't know what that is, um, what it is, and how that has, sh has shaped your designs? Okay, so slow fashion is essentially um, being a little bit more mindful where your clothing is coming from, how it's grown, who makes it, even down to the production of it, um, taking time to make sure that, you know, the workers are, you know, not in an industry where it's 
considered fast fashion where they're not being paid equal to the production rate. So slow fashion is more mindful of, um, also it's also sustainable and it's mindful of the environment, the people, and also the cost. That's perfect. That's yeah. really good. How, how important is it having such a, well, firstly, a schedule, like how that works, like a planned schedule, and, and actually sticking to the same routine in the morning? How important is it? Have you found that day by day? It is really important um, for me. I'm a person, I like to have um, a little bit of structure. Sometimes um, I'll go off the wall and I, I'll just like have a random free day. But for me, and especially in any business, you know, it's good to have a routine, um, put things in place, and it helps you to also organize and help other people to say, okay, around this time, I think maybe Anya's doing this. So, you know, it, it sets the tone and pace for your day as well. Perfect. What is your proudest moment in the history of the week? Mm, I would say most recently that would have to be the Bahamian Icon Award. So they emailed me. I was just, it was just a random day. Checked in my inbox and I was like, oh, spam. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then it was just like, oh, congratulations. You've been nominated for this award. And I'm, for me to be recognized on a national level, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm like, I can't believe this is actually happening. And I, at that time, I literally, this is about two weeks ago, by the way, I, yeah, I literally was like, okay, this is a game changer. Like you actually put the work in and you're being recognized for it. So um, I don't know if I told you this, but Wuleek is only about two years old. No, seriously? Yeah, two years old. Wow. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, wow. That you've come a long way in two years. Yeah, it's, it's been a journey. And on the back of that, what's the most humbling thing that's happened for you? Um, I would say the most humbling has been um, actually working with charities. So at one point I worked with a charity, I donated a bag, and the raffle money from that was actually used to fund a girl's education. And it made me very humble as to realize that I made a change in someone's life and wow. yeah. That's amazing. Um, what has been your biggest challenge so far? People. <laughs> <laughs> the best and the worst. <laughs> um, I would say actually my challenge has been myself. So um, someone once told me that when you start a business, your business is you. Or look at it, look at it as an onion. And every layer you unfold with that onion, and that's your onion is your business. Every layer that you unfold in the center, it's always going to be you. So anything that you do, it's going to be you. So that has been more or less making sure that I know who I am and where I'm going. That's been the challenge in keeping focus on why I'm doing it and my purpose. That's amazing. Of course, you just talked about your challenges. Um, have you had any major setbacks? Recently? I did actually go on a hiatus last year. So um, I think getting back into the swing of things, that was a huge setback for me. So mm. around this time last year, um, yeah, around this time, my dad had passed and that literally threw me off. So I was mm. like, oh my God. You know, so that actually gave me time to review everything yeah. and it helped me to realize what I actually wanted. Wow. Yeah, so that actually, that hiatus of um, trying to find my direction again, that actually kind of propelled me forward. So my setback or hiatus actually kind of made me a little bit more focused for this year. It's crazy how that moments like that happen that just kind of make you take a, a pause and just reevaluate life and just how fragile it is. Because um, yeah. we lost our um, granddad in December. Oh, no, 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 no. sorry. Right in December. So it's like, yeah, every now and again you just get um, you know, a reminder of just yeah. like 
how precious life precious is. is and how important it is to make the most opportunity in the moment mm. to people um because people's like the most important thing okay we're gonna i mean you mentioned that willie's two years old or just over two years old which it's still surprising to me um i thought it was older but i guess that's that's a testament to how strong the brand is and how you're going from strength to strength to strength um how have what marketing strategies have you used to help really grow i would say it probably that would have to do a lot of social social media as well as um in the start we did about two shows um the first one which was our one nose collection the next one which was um focus around sustainability so that actually helped people to say okay what is this brand about they're having a show um and also i would say pretty much um taking it home which was a shock to me so um taking it home to the bahamas and turks and caicos and just seeing how i got such warm reviews and that was i feel the best thing that has happened as well And I've read a few of those magazine articles and newspaper articles and blog posts and I'm, I'm, it, it really inspires me and it just shows, it's a testament to you as a person oh, just how you. much care and love and attention you put into your work because it shows through because when the person, like every time, I think it was an article that said like every time one of your customers received the bag they felt the attention and the love from the products rather than like with some bigger chains where it's like because it's so mass produced you don't feel that connection. I think you've imbued into even the, the the items you've got here with you today. You've imbued that little touch, which makes all the difference. Yeah, I really love personalization. Um, do you have a business mentor? I know you say you've got a personal mentor. Mm -hmm. Do you have one specific for business? Um, I actually did have a business mentor. Um, he took a break from it. Um, so I actually started out with the Princess Trust. So they gave us a business mentor and he was, he was pr pretty good. Um, he actually used to work for Google. So yeah, um, he gave me a lot of direction, especially, um, I would say trying to don't just think local, think global. That was his thing. And he always said, bring it back to you because he was actually the one who, he gave me a few good books to read. One would be The Golden Circle. And he was like, always remember that you are your business. That is a great tip. I'm actually going to use that with what we're doing here. Because we've had a few meetings about how we can expand and grow, but that is very, very good. Um, I like that. I mean, you mentioned you had a mentor um, when you first started. Are mm -hmm. you still in contact with that mentor? Yes, actually, yeah. So um, sometimes we'll meet up, um, go to lunch, mm. and just catch up. But it's not every day. But I would say maybe, maybe every two or three months. But we do keep in contact. So if I have a question, I'll probably be like, Shh, sh I need help with this. What is this? So but yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get back to you. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, mentors are really important. I mean, when you got that mentor how did you seek her out did you have a criteria in mind or did you just approach her and that was it um i approached so um i noticed that the field that she was in she was actually a leader in her field so when i sought was, was seeking a mentor i literally said do you have time for coffee and we just sat and spoke and she said sure and she let me know that her time was limited and i valued that and we just built a really good relationship from there and she's literally been to every show that i've had she's an amazing wow. person yeah amazing what are your goals for the week for the rest of the year and beyond mm, we have lots of goals um Right now, our first goal would be to um, put out our conscious collection for the summer. And then we are actually going to have a new collection in September. So we haven't had a new collection since 2016. So that's something wow. to look forward to. Wow. Looking back from where you are now, and of course back to the moment when you first started 
if you were to pass on any advice to your 16 year old self so obviously in the UK that would be leaving high school going into college Mm. what would you say to your 16 year old self I would tell her to be strong believe in yourself and to I would make smart decisions Uh, that's what I would tell her because most time at that age you're you're the most fragile that's very true Anya it's been an absolute pleasure thank you very much it's been a pleasure as well thank you for coming on as I said before um, links will be in the description below to Willik you can follow her on Instagram and Twitter and of course head over to week.co.uk and now week.com to purchase some of her new cool and exciting bespoke handbags